and welcome to the chapter four exercise help video. I'm Darren Bell. I'm going to be helping you through this video. The, uh, the, the first problem here, we are talking about which columns from the adjusted trial balance, uh, which ones go into what type of accounts go into the income statement columns, which ones are part of the credit column, uh, the debit column, the credit column, and then as we move on further in the worksheet, the very last set of, of columns, we have the balance sheet statement of owner's equity columns. What type of accounts are in the debit column there, which ones are in the credit column? And so we'll just go ahead and list uh, some of these out here real quick just to hopefully help you understand the uh, the items there. Okay, so on our income statement, uh, we're going to have two main types of accounts. Uh, those are going to be uh, revenue accounts and expense accounts. So the revenue and expense accounts, so the, the income statement, of course, the equation for the income statement is revenues minus expenses equals net income. So that's important to remember. So as we have these two accounts, which one's a debit and which one's a credit normally, right? What is the normal balance? And so we know that our revenues here, they are normally, when we do our uh, T account, we add revenues on the credit side. So these are the credit uh, normal balance accounts. So any revenue accounts are gonna be the credit column there. So that's where the revenues are gonna go right here. They're gonna be credit column income statement columns. And then the expenses, of course, are opposite. They're going to be our debit uh, accounts right there. So expenses are debits, right? So we're going to uh, have them on the debit column side of the income statement. So now down here for the balance sheet and statement of owner's equity accounts. So the balance sheet kind of goes like this, right? Assets equals liability plus uh, our owner's equity. And then for each one of those, where do they fit? So if we have an asset column, we know the normal balance for assets are gonna be uh, debits. That's the normal balance right here. And so on the debit column side, we're gonna have assets. Uh, our liabilities, normal balance, we're going past the equal sign here. So we're flipping our rule here. So normally they're on the credit side so our normal balance, so our liabilities are going to be in the credit column of the balance sheet uh, there. Our equity accounts, well, they're mixed all over the place, right? So we have our, we're doing, um, we're doing our sole proprietorship stuff, right? So we got a capital account here. That is going to follow the normal equity rule, which is a normal balance for capital accounts is going to be credit. Anything that increases equity is going to be a credit. The other credit on the um, balance on the statement of owners equity equity side is going to be our um, in this case, right? We're not going to have our revenues and expenses in this. So what's going to be uh, another credit? We're not going to really have any other credits on there unless we have maybe partnerships. We'll have multiple capital accounts, uh, but we definitely have a debit here with our withdrawal account. So owner withdrawals is a debit. So that'll be on the debit side of the uh, owner's equity, statement of owner's equity columns. So hopefully this helps. So if you know what account you're dealing with and the account type, then you kind of know which one to put on that one. Okay, so problem num number two. Uh, what we have here is we have the adjusted trial balance. Really what we're doing with this problem is we're kind of starting halfway uh, through the worksheet. So we'll have some full worksheets that we're gonna do the adjustments on. We're assuming this one, the adjustments have already been completed. So here we are, we've got the adjusted trial balance set. Now our task is to get the columns here in the adjusted trial balance. We wanna get them over into the right uh, financial statement columns. And so just like we were doing before, we uh, got right here, from here down, our withdrawal or our revenues, right? From here down, 
is going to be our income statement accounts. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the balance as shown and we're just going to scooch it over. So this is our credit here. That's our revenue. We're going to scooch it over here into the credit column of the income statement. We've got all of our debits here. These are expenses. We're going to scoot them over here into the debit column of the income statement. So that's where they're going to go. That's how we slide over our income statements. Of course, they're going to uh, balance here at the bottom, or they're not. They're actually not going to balance at the bottom. And so we're going to have to put in our net income here at the bottom once these are entered to balance everything out here, right? These, these two here at the very bottom, these two amounts here and here in the totals, by the end, they should balance out. Okay, so now we're going to go up to our balance sheet, a statement of owner's equity. Here are all of our assets from cash all the way down through land. Those are all of our assets. They're going to slide over here to the balance sheet column, and they're going to keep their, their uh, debit or credit balance as they are here in the adjusted trial balance. So all these, so for cash, accounts receivable, trucks, they're all going to be debits. Our contra asset, our accumulated depreciation will be a credit. And then we'll have land, of course, right there, right? So those are all of our assets. Here are our liabilities next. These three right here are going to be liabilities. They're all credits. So they're just going to slide right over here into the credit column. Uh, one, two, three, right there. And then uh, the the last two for this this last column here, uh, or these last two columns are going to slide over is our capital accounts. That's our capital, or our equity accounts, I should say. That's our capital and our withdrawals accounts are going to slide over. Capital is going to be, of course, a credit. And then withdrawals are going to be the debit there. And then, of course, those will sum up here. So that's where we're going to get our we're going to get our uh, sums right. They're going to sum here to the bottom. Sum sum right. That's going to be all summed up. Uh, they are not going to balance, and so we've got to plug in our net incomes here, and our net income here, and and then they will all balance. So these will all these two at the end will balance, and then the for the balance sheet and statement of earners equity and our income statement, uh, debit and credit column will also balance. So that's going to be the trick at the end is to add net income. And if it's a net loss, then it'll be opposite. It won't be debit to income statement. It'll be a credit. And if for the net loss, it won't be a credit to the uh, equity in the in this balance sheet and statement of earners equity side. It'll actually be a debit. So it, it is possible to have a loss, of course, in a business. So that's what the way it would show. Okay, so now problem number three. So the way this is going, now we're gonna back up a little bit on our worksheet, right? So the, with the last two, we've been kind of working on how those, uh, how we find the financial statement columns and, and work with those in our worksheet. Of course, we our financial statements come from our adjusted trial balance, but what if, in our worksheet, we're starting from the very beginning with unadjusted uh, balances and we need to make adjustments. So here's an example here of what the adjustments columns is, is going to look like. So the adjustment columns in the worksheet, we're going to have a, 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 a balanced debit and credit column in total. So the sums at the bottom, they've got to balance. So that's going to be key here, right? So these, that's got to balance. And so what that means is, as we do adjusting entries, we're going to be able to find matching pairs on the debit and credit side. So the debit here, for example, we're going to find, we're, let's go alphabetically, right? So A is going to be right here. That's an adjustment to our prepaid insurance. And of course, uh, a great match for prepaid insurance on that adjustment is our insurance expense. So there is the other A there, right? So these two are matching. So there's the match. So we're, we're going to match all these. B, these match right here. C matches right here. Uh, D matches right here. And E matches right here. Whoop, my C got, oh, wait. Uh, e matches right there. Which one was this? This one was C, right? 
got to get my C pointed correctly right there. There we go. So th they're all matching. So that's an important part uh, to be able to build our, because we can build journal entries off this. It's basically just the accounts over there and debits and credits are given to us. So we're just matching those up in each entry uh, for what those are. So that's, that's gonna be that problem. Okay, our next, this is problem four. So this is a, a, a simple, a relatively simple worksheet. We're gonna have two worksheets in this homework uh, exercise set. So this is the simple worksheet that we're gonna do and I'm gonna kinda walk you through the steps uh, here, I'm not going to do the whole thing for you, but I'm going to kind of walk you through it a little bit just to get you into it. And so uh, the first thing we're going to do, so when you work with worksheets, what you want to do is you, you're going to want to work from, uh, from left to right, right? You're going to go left to right, so you're going to start with the unadjusted trial balance and you're going to put in the adjustments to begin with. So I know it's really tempting to just... Uh, zip through and kind of pull numbers across really quickly all the way over to the income st uh, all the way over to the financial statements resist doing that because uh, that's gonna lead to errors in the end so what I want you to do is I want you to go from left to right uh, and you're gonna want to make sure your debit and credit columns are balancing all the way across so the uh, uh, so we already see here on the adjusted uh, unadjusted trial balance side we see here these are balancing, so that is good. So that's that's a good sign for us at that point. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put adjustments in. So we've got uh, A, B, C, D, E here, right? We're gonna do an adjustment for each one of those. And so that means we're gonna have at least one, two, three, four, five debits, and we're gonna have five credits at least. Right? We may have more of one or the other, but the idea is they're gonna be matching that we're gonna put in there as we're doing adjusting. Uh, so for these, to keep it simple, I think we're, we're just going to have one of each. So for example, let's do the first couple here. So depreciation on equipment is $10 for the year. So we're going to come down here. We see depreciation. So we're going to have 10 more dollars. That will increase our depreciation, accumulated depreciation. So we'll put the 10 here. So we gotta, that's our credit. we got to match our, it up with our debit. We're looking down here, and sure enough, there's depreciation expense that's a perfect match and so there we go so this is a little bit like a matching game with these adjustments uh, accrued salaries so these are salaries that have been incurred but not paid and so we're gonna have uh, salaries payable there we go that's gonna be one of the things we'll use right we haven't paid them yet so we have uh, payable they've been incurred so we get to expense them so 13 match will be here. Uh, next one is $19 of unearned revenue has been earned. So that's great. So that means this unearned revenue right here, we earned that. So we didn't have, we didn't get uh, more money and have more unearned revenue. We're actually earning it. So that's going to be a debit there. Our credit there is going to be, of course, the revenue account. Once we earn it, we get accounted as revenue. Uh, next one here is supplies available at the end of the year is 50 bucks. So this one's a little tricky. When we do our supplies balances, this one's a little tricky. What it's telling us here is we have $66 here, right? It's telling us that the balance after the adjustment is not going to be 66, but the balance will be 50. Yeah, so, so that tells us what the adjustment should be, which is we're going to credit supplies by $16, right? 66 to minus 66 debit minus a 16 credit will give us a $50 debit is the way that works. And then of course down here on this side we're going to do supplies expense. Do I have that in the wrong? Uh, I have that in the wrong deal. 13 should be up here. This should be not 13. This should be uh, 16. Sorry, got that in the wrong one. Salaries and supplies. I'm getting the wrong accounts there. There we go. So that's that one. Uh, and then the very last one, of course, expired insurance. That's our prepaid insurance here. 22 expired. So that's not increasing prepaid. That's actually reducing it. So our expired insurance, 22 here. And then uh, insurance expense, 22 there. 
So there we go. So we got matching. So these totals here at the bottom should now balance, right? So that's one of your checks. You're going to say, well, um, if it's not balanced, where's my mismatch? Because we're doing matches on these adjusting entries. we got to make sure everything balances. And so if it doesn't balance, you just got to find that mismatch and solve it. Next thing in the worksheet. So we're again, we're working from left to right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say, okay, here's we're going to now we're going to do top to bottom. So first, we're going to do our adjustments on the left. Then we're going to go uh, to adjusted trial balance. Working from top to bottom here, we've got our cash balance, no adjustment. So it's just going to slide right over. If there's no adjustment in there, it's not going to change. Accounts receivable, same thing. No change. We're just going to move it over. We already talked about supplies and the adjustment there, so that's how that one's going to change. Prepaid. Uh, we've got a debit and a credit. They're opposite. They're going to subtract, and so there's going to be our new debit, right? And then equipment here is going to slide over. Uh, no adjustment there. We do have an adjustment to accumulated depreciation, so that'll be 39. And then, so you kind of get the idea how this is going to work, right? We're going to go down through here, and we're going to do this uh, in a pretty systematic way is the way we're going to do it. Now, this one's a little tricky. Salaries payable. The balance basically here is zero, right? It doesn't show, but it is zero. So that's going to be give us a new balance here. The unearned revenue, we got a balance. We debited the credit exact opposite and equals, so our balance here is zero. So we can either leave that blank or we can say zero there, um, whichever the computer likes there, right? If it doesn't like it, then don't do that. Uh, we know the answer is zero there. So I'm just I'm just con continuing down here. I'm going to continue down. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay, there we go. So there's everything set. Now we can do what we did before in the past exercises, which are, uh, which is, uh, so the next thing we're going to do here is we are going to, I'm changing my color here so I can show you. Uh, we're going to drag these over, these right here, right? That's our income statement one. So the our revenue is going to go here. Our expenses are going to go to the debit side. And then we're going to go ahead and drag over all of our assets um, over into the balance sheet, right? Everything above here, the assets, liabilities, and the capital and withdrawals in the equity side are going to go to the far side of the uh the worksheet in the balance sheet and statement of owner's equity debit and credit columns. At the very last, what we're going to do, once we get those over there, we're going to have to figure out, okay, what is the difference between revenues and expenses? So we're going to say revenues minus expenses is going to equal net income right here. We've got to put that in and then we've got to slide it over again here. If we've got a positive net income, that will update our totals at the bottom here they should all balance at the bottom and then we're done. So it's a bit of a process, uh, but you can do it a lot quicker than I can since I kind of showed you and walked you through there. Your numbers are going to be different than mine. Just go through again, work left to right and make sure that you're doing top to bottom. The, the, really the trick is just being detailed about it and, and organized and systematic and you'll get it all straight. All right. So next one here is we're switching over. So chapter four, we're introducing the concept of closing. So the, 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 the idea of closing is we have uh, tracked our revenues, our expenses, okay, and our withdrawals are the temporary accounts that we've been tracking all year. Uh, we cannot let that flow over into the next accounting period, into next year, for example because next year's revenues and expenses and withdrawals need to be tracked separately, right? It's kind of like saying uh, we're in a game, we're in a basketball game, for example. We end the game and then we play the same team again in another game. We don't start with the same score that we had in, in the first game, right? Uh, we actually start over again. So that's, that's the temporary, temporary accounts. Uh, the permanent accounts, there's some of permanent accounts, those are going to be capital. Capital is our main permanent account that we're going to be using in these entries. That's where everything's going to flow into 
in the end, and that will be uh, our permanent account that will then carry over. Uh, just like teams, for example, you erase the scores from each game, right, and start a, start a new game every time you start the game, but you do have your win-loss record. Right? You're going to have your win-loss record that's going to carry forward, kind of like our capital account. We're, that's a permanent one, more permanent as you go forward there. Okay, so let's fill this out here real quick. This is a four-step process. We're going to start with our revenues. And so one of the key things when we're understanding this is we've got our, let me switch back over to red. Uh, it shows up a little better. Actually, I'll go with let's go with black here real quick okay so what we're gonna do here real quick is we're gonna have our accounts that we're gonna work with right and I'll go step by step sometimes it helps to be able to visualize that visualize this in a, like a T account scenario and see things moving and so one of the things that I like to do is I like to say okay here's our revenue accounts right whatever the revenue accounts are typically they're gonna have they're gonna have a balance over here right that's where our normal balance is going to be credit balance yeah and then we also have our expense accounts typically they're going to have a balance those balances are going to be typically on the debit side and so what we're going to do is we have our an, a new account this one's a super temporary account we're only we only use this one where when we're doing closing because we're going to park our revenue and our expenses in that account it's called the income summary account and that's going to be one of the steps when we're doing our, uh, or the first two steps that we're going to be doing. So this is, this is income summary account. This is our, this is our super temporary account that we use just in closing. Okay, so here we go. Here's income summary. What's its normal balance? It really doesn't have one. It is. It will become whatever uh, we move into it, right? So it's waiting. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move. We've got to move this revenue balance. Let me change my color here real quick. We're going to move this revenue balance into the income summary. So how do we do that? If we want to move our revenues here, right? We got our we got a credit balance from revenue. We're going to move it over. We've got a credit income summary. So that'll be the credit to it. To get rid of this balance in revenue, this is going to be our closing entry. It will be to the debit side of revenue. So we're going to we're going to do the entry to revenues exact opposite and equal of the balance. That way, in the end, the balance will be zero. That's what closing is. We're just zeroing out the balances and we're moving them over. Okay, so then now for our expenses. Our expenses will end up on this side of income summary. So it'll be a debit, right? That's where the expense balance is. Uh, so we're going to debit income summary with all the expenses, the sum for all the expenses, and to close. Our closing entry will be to the credit side of income summary, exact opposite and equal of the balance, and then that will give us a zero balance, of course. So that's the goal. We're closing these accounts, we're zeroing them out, and then, uh, so let's do that for the first two real quick, right? So for the first two, we've got how many revenues? We've got two. We've got services revenue, and we've got interest revenue, okay? So what is going to be our... Uh, debit as we close the revenues. Our debit as we close the revenues, we see here, so we see here that the debit that we showed for connected to the revenue one, right? So these, this is the revenue entry. The debit is to revenue. So our revenue accounts are going to be debited. Debited. So there's going to be two revenue accounts, the two that we uh, start up there. There's going to be two of them that we're going to debit. And then our credit will be, we see here, our credit will be to income summary. Income summary will be the, will be the credit here. Uh, and that'll be whatever these two debits are added up, right? So these are going to balance. So two, two debits to close our revenues, one credit to income summary. So now the next one we're going to do here is for expenses. So we're going to look here at our expense entries here, right? So this one here at the bottom. So where's our debit? Our debit actually is going to be to income summary. So that's what we're going to start off with. So our income summary will be our debit. Okay. 
And so that'll be the sum. That'll be the sum of all expenses because how many expenses do we have? We actually have three. So we have one, two, three expenses. So we're going to line them up here. We're going to line up the expenses as our credits. Of course, you're going to pick the real expense account names. right? I'm just lining them up here. Uh, so it'll be salaries expense, depreciation expense, and utilities expense. And then they will be credits here. So that'll be our balance there for and closing those expense accounts. We're going to credit them for the exact opposite amount of their balance currently. So those that's the balances that we have up there. So the last thing we're going to do with this, so let's uh, change our color here real quick. So the last thing we're going to do, or, the, or step number three, we'll, we'll see as you do those two first two steps, you're going to actually see this part at the bottom. You're going to see the uh, revenues come in here. You're going to see the expenses come in here, that balance that you put up there. And then you're going to have a, a new balance. You're going to have a new balance there, right? So whatever your balance is in income summary, whatever your balance is, which in this case, I'm thinking our balance is going to be on the revenue side when we have net income, when we have more income or more revenue than expenses, that'll be our balance side. Now that will be step number uh, three. We're going to close our income summary account to our capital account. Our capital account is our permanent account. Normally the capital balance, of course, our normal balance uh, is going to be on this side, right? Normal balance. So we should have a capital balance over there. And we're going to close this income summary. So to close it, of course, we go exactly opposite and equal. So this will be the close. We're going to debit it if it has a, a credit balance. And then we're going to, so that'll be our debit to income summary. Our credit here will be our income summary coming into capital uh, that which will be actually our net income is what that'll be so this is our closing entry right here that'll be our closing entry number three right and so that that'll be down here in number three we're gonna have our debit of course is our income summary with whatever balance the amount will be from up here right in our income summary balance and we're going to debit that credit balance to close it out and then our credit will be to our capital account our capital account will be the credit okay so that's step number three the last uh step here the last thing to close is this one that's just kind of hanging out there so which one is hanging out there well we're going to go up and we're going to see sure enough the one hanging out here is our withdrawals right there there it is so we haven't closed that one yet it's still out there it's a temporary account so we got to close it that one that we're going to show here so our withdrawals normal balance for withdrawals of course is going to be a debit balance so that 22,000 up there for withdrawals that's a debit balance sitting there so how do we close it well we've got to go exactly opposite and equal. That'll zero out our withdrawal account. And where do we put it? Well, we put it into the capital account. So this is going to be our withdrawals coming over here to capital. Withdrawals will be there. And so the closing entry is here. So that'll be debit to capital, credit to withdrawals. So here's our capital. Capital is going to be our debit with for whatever the withdrawals balance is, and that currently is twenty-two thousand for us, right? In this, your your number may be different. Mine's twenty-two thousand. Uh, then the credit, of course, is our withdrawal account, and that'll be for twenty-two thousand. And we'll see here as we put in our uh, income summary and our withdrawals in here, we'll see that withdrawals will end up here. Our income summary will come over on this side, and then we will have a new balance in our capital balance, right? So it starts at 25,000 is our beginning balance, uh, 25,000 over here, right? That's our 
uh, beginning balance in capital, and then we add to it with income summary and we subtract from it with our withdrawals, that gives us our new updated closed, right? Because we, we're closing everything into it, capital balance. So that's gonna be that one. Uh, let's move on to the next. Okay, problem six. So um, it says here, right, it's following income statement and uh, columns, right, for the 10 column worksheet. And uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna determine the amount that should be entered in the net income line of the worksheet. So net income, our net income is gonna be, let me flip over here to a different color. And so that's pretty easy, right? Our net income is gonna equal revenues minus expenses equals net income. So prepare the amount that should be entered in the net income line of the worksheet. So here's our revenues right there. So we got one revenue minus all these expenses, right? So that's gonna be our number, uh, 100,000 minus all of these expenses and that will be our net income number. So for the first one. So the next one is, it says it wants us to prepare the company's closing entries. <clears throat> so we don't have any withdrawals. We don't see the withdrawal account. So step number four is not gonna happen here for us. We don't have withdrawals, um, right? No withdrawals, it says. So we're just gonna, we're gonna have to do the first three steps that we just went over in the last one. So refer back to number five for this. But the first steps are, one, we're gonna close withdrawals, right? So number one is here. We're gonna close withdrawals to the income summary account. Step number two, we're gonna close expenses to the income summary account. So, uh, and then number three, of course, we have our income summary account. We're gonna close that balance that's created in income summary. And what is that balance, you might ask? What is that balance? Well, the balance that we're gonna close in income summary will be our net income balance. We calculated that in the first step of this problem, right? So you have that number already. So step number one, we're closing revenue, that one revenue account. So, so debit revenue, credit uh, our income summary. Step number two, we're gonna close our expense accounts, which means we're gonna have to credit all of our expenses, each one individually, right? Our debit though, we're gonna start out with, our debit will be income summary there and it'll, it'll be the sum of all those expenses, which we already calculated as part of our, that's part of our hopefully um, net income calculation. And then step number three, in the very end, that uh, net income that's sitting there, that we calculated in number one, it's gonna be a credit balance in income summary. So we're gonna have to debit income summary, right? Exact opposite and equal to close it out. And then we're gonna credit capital. So that's where everything in the closing, that's where everything gets parked in the very end because that's our, that's our uh, permanent account in equity. We're parking it in there uh, at the very end. So that's closing for you. Hopefully that helps you. All right, so we've got this one. This one's quite a, quite a, uh, a lot here. I'm not gonna write really a whole lot in here. I'm gonna give you an example with real numbers so you can see how this worksheet is built. This is a big one. Uh, and you are most likely going to have a worksheet like this, right, uh, on the exam. So it's gonna be important to understand how this one works so you can recreate it on the exam for yourself. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do here, again, we're working left to right, top to bottom on the worksheet. Uh, just to, that's the way we need to work uh, to get it all set. The first thing we're gonna do here is we're, we've got uh, our adjustments. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we should have eight debits and eight credits in our adjusting entries. So the adjustments can be found uh, in requirement 2A, the next tab over. Uh, you can do one of, you can do either one, right? Whichever one you wanna do first, do first. Uh, you don't have to recreate the will for the next one though, right? So for example, if you do your adjusting uh, columns first, just like this, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna have eight on both sides. If you do your adjusting columns first and they balance, 
then you've got all that data captured. You can then create your journal entries. Here they are right here, right? This is what they're gonna look like, okay, for this problem set. Or you can create your journal entries first, and then you can do your worksheet, right? Either one. So you're, they're gonna be the same, is what I'm saying, right? You don't have to recreate the will. One or the other, just copy it over. Okay, so that's the very first one. Again, make sure debits and credit columns balance on this one. All right, if they don't balance, then come back. You gotta have eight on each side. Uh, next one here is we are going to uh, create our adjusted trial balance balances. To do this one, you got to start at the top, start with cash. There's 20,000 right at the very top on mine. Your numbers may be different. Uh, move it over, right? Each one, start at the very top with cash and just move down. And so move it over. It's If it has an adjusting entry, it will be... Uh, adjusted as it moves through the adjustments right so so for example our accounts receivable here I think is 9,000 it's going to uh, we paid off some accounts receivable on this one so our adjusting uh, entry will reduce the 9,000 down to 3,240 right so that's what we're gonna do as we move across there all the way to the bottom we're gonna go do that all the way and then of course our adjustment columns already balanced right you wouldn't have really put anything in the adjusted trial balance uh, columns if your adjustments aren't already done and balanced. They should balance before you even do this step. So now, if we move it over correctly, then our adjusted trial balance debit and credit columns should balance at this point. If not, go back and, and you can find the error in there. Uh, it's not going to work out if your adjusting uh, if your adjustment columns don't balance to begin with. Uh, over there okay so moving on so the next one on this one we're doing closing entries so here's our closing entries the format we've already done some of these here so we're just repeating and really this is going to be a tricky part on the exam so that's why we uh, do these things a couple times in exercise just to make sure you have uh, enough um, experience hopefully it, it sticks and you understand it right a little bit more so here's the adjusting entries closing revenues closing expenses Closing incomes summary and then closing withdrawals. There's the four steps there. Where you where do you get these numbers and these accounts? Well, you're gonna look at the adjusted trial balance. So the one you just completed, if you have that one done, then the numbers are gonna come off of there. So where where are our temporary accounts? Our temporary accounts are gonna be right, they're gonna start right. Uh, let me use a different color here so you can see this. We'll use red. Uh, here's our withdraw account, right? There's our withdraws. Everything there and down. Those are all temporary accounts. Here's our revenue account over here, right? There's our revenue. Oops. There's our revenue. Here are our expenses, right? Okay, so close revenues first. That's number one. Close uh, expenses. That's number two. You're going to have your income summary income summary where do we find that well right down here at the bottom revenues uh, revenues minus expenses we're, that'll actually be over in the income statement if you if you uh, slide this over and and do that or you can do the calculation real quick with revenues minus expenses right that's your income summary balance you're going to close the capital and then that's going to be number three and then number four of course is your uh, withdraw uh, account closing into capital as well. So that's going to be that that step to create that. Okay, so our next uh, thing that we're going to do here, which we've done from the beginning, we've done this a couple times already, so hopefully it makes sense for you, is we're sliding these adjusted trial balances uh, over into the right income statement um, columns. And then once we get them over there, we're going to create the income statements, right? So, so here is, or the, the right financial statements, I should say. So here's the income statement. There it is. And where does that come from? Well, that's pretty easy, right? Here's our revenue, comes right out of there. Here's all of our expenses, comes right from here, right? We're just going to grab those expenses right there and pull them over. And so that's going to, that's going to be how we build our income statement. 
pretty easy on that one, right? Because we've already have it basically built. We just need to pull it over. All right, next one we're going to do is our statement of owner's equity here. Um, our statement of owner's equity is going to be, so our statement of owner's equity, this one's going to be a little tricky. So this number is from the very top of your problem. It gives us the capital balance at the beginning. It also gives us the investments at the very beginning. Uh, these two end up being this uh, 87,300 is what that, where, where that comes from, right? So that's gonna be that. Our net income, of course, is gonna be here at the bottom of your income statement. You're gonna do that, that little net income tie-in to make things balance. That'll be easy to find. And then, of course, our withdrawals which are negative, uh, which are subtracted from this to get our ending balance is gonna be up here. So that's gonna be how we tie that all together for our statement of owner's equity. The very last one we're gonna do here is our balance sheet. Uh, pretty easy to do, right? This one, we're actually splitting this out. So this is a class, what we call a classified balance sheet, which means we have our current assets and our plant assets or long-term or fixed assets, whatever you call those. There's several ter different terms for them. Uh, we're gonna have those separated. So that's gonna be a separated deal. And you can see, you can use this as an example. Uh, that's gonna be our assets there that we're gonna have. Um, and then, we're, so that's our assets are gonna get pulled down into here from there. We see, of course, our accumulated depreciation is part of that. And then we have our liabilities. That's gonna be a chunk right here, right? They're gonna get pulled down here. And then at the very end, we are going to have, there, uh, there's our uh, long-term, our long-term liability, of course, we're classifying or separating those out. Our capital balance here at the very bottom, right? Where does this come from? How do we get that last capital balance? It's not the same balance as up here, right? So this balance, you cannot just bring it down and plug it in. That's not the capital balance we want. That's coming from our statement of owner's equity. So the one we just did, that's gonna be our updated balance, uh, really after the closing process, right? It's gonna be have all the, all the income statement closed into it. It's gonna have all of our withdrawals closed into it and, and all of that. And so that's gonna be our updated capital balance at the very, very ending is what that's gonna be. So hopefully this helps you out. Uh, again, if you have any questions, students, you have my email, um, reach out to me and I will help you out with that. Have a good day, bye.